Hi everybody, this is Karen Smith, your instructor, and I have a projectile motion problem for you. Okay, so we have an object that's being thrown upward from the top of a 1,200 foot tall building. Now the height measured in feet of the object after t seconds is given by this equation. H of t is equal to negative 16t squared plus 160t plus 1200. Ergo our 1200 feet tall building. So once again we're throwing an object from 1200 feet tall building upwards and eventually it'll hit the ground. There, that's a little better. Okay, let's go look at the questions A and B. So A is asking us where is this object after three seconds after it's thrown? Okay, so we want to let T, the time, equal to three. Okay, so if we let T equal three now what we're going to do is we're going to take the function h of t and we're going to find h at 3. So wherever there's a t in our function, we're going to put a 3. So let's do that. Let's get that value. So here what I've done is I've written it in the function in black, but everywhere I had a t, I went ahead and inserted that 3 in its place. Now we can go ahead and simplify, see what value we get when t is 3 seconds. Remember, follow your order of operations. So if we do that, we'll go ahead and find 3 squared first. So negative 16 times 9, okay, and then plus 160 times 3, 480 plus 1200. I think the rest you can do yourselves. So remember, you'll do this first, negative 16 times 9. Then we'll add everything up. What do we get in the end? If you've done this correctly, then you have 1,536 feet is how far the object has traveled. Okay? Or rather, I should say, it'll be that tall and be at that height. So 1,536 feet is going to be somewhere up here, right? So one, two, three seconds could be one of these, but it has to be above 1,200 feet. So it's somewhere up in the top arch of that parabola. But we know it is 1,536, 1,536 feet high off the ground according to our function. Okay, part B. How long does it take for the object to hit the ground? What does this mean? Let's think about it. How long does it take for it to hit the ground? What that would mean is that the height would actually have to be at zero. So if we look at it this way, Okay, the ground level or the height at the ground would be zero. So let's just take for example where the ball started from at time zero. For example, this would be the point zero, zero, right? Okay, and so here where the ball lands on the ground, okay, this would be where the height, h, of t would equal zero. So what we can do in our equation, let's go back to the pages, we can take h of t, we can take this and replace it with zero. It's kind of like letting y equal zero to find the x-intercept. So we want to solve this equation when h of t or when y is equal to zero. So what does that look like? So what I'll do, instead of h of t, I'm going to write 0 is equal to negative 16t squared plus 160t 
plus 1200. Let's take this to a fresh page and work on it. I'll say it again. So we're trying to find out when the object is going to have a height of zero. In other words, when it's going to hit the ground, right? So we're going to replace h of t with zero. So let's take a look. All right, so instead of h of t, I'm going to write zero is equal to, and then I'm going to write the rest of my equation. Okay. So what I need to do is follow my steps of factoring, right? Remember factoring quadratics. So the first thing I need to do is make sure I have it in descending order, and I do. I have t squared, right? And I have the t term, and then I have the constant term. So we want it in that form ax squared plus bx plus c. Got it. The next thing I need to do is to check to see if there's a common factor that I can factor out. So we would like to have a positive leading coefficient once I go to factor the uh, quadratic form. So let's go ahead and take out a negative and 16 since every term has a factor of 16. And once I factor out negative 16, remember each term the sign will go opposite. So the first term ends up being a positive t squared. My second term ends up being a negative or minus 10t. And then the final term is going to be minus 75. And this is a lot more manageable. We can factor out this trinomial much easier. So let's go ahead and do that. So now remember we're only interested in factoring the rest that's left over in this parentheses. So we need to find factors of 75 that have a difference of 10. I have my little thought bubble side work. So factors of 75 with a difference of 10. Let's list out some factors of 75. You can start with 5 times something, or we can start with 3 times something. We know that we have 3 times 25, right? Well, that won't work. If I subtract 3 and 25, not going to happen, right? Move up to 5. Okay, what about 5 times 15? There you go. 15 minus 5 is 10. Now, let's get those signs right. Really, we need to have positive 5 and negative 15, right? Positive 5, negative 15. That would give us a negative 10t. So let's use these factors in our factorization. I'll show you what to do next. So we know it's going to factor into two binomials. Now look here, we have t times t. That gave us our t squared, right? All right, and we know that 5 times 15 will give us our 75, okay? We know that the signs inside of the two sets of parentheses will be different, okay? And so we just need to carefully place them so that we have a negative 10x, excuse me, t, negative 10t. So we will let the larger of the outer and inner, we have 15t and 5t. Let me just show you. Alright, we want this one to be the negative, right? Because this one will be left to be the positive, and they'll combine to give me a negative 10t. There you go. And there you have it. Now let's finish solving our quadratic equation by setting each of the factors that contain variables equal to zero. So we need to set t plus 5 equal to 0 and t minus 15. So t plus 5 could be 0. t minus 15 could also equal 0. So for the first one, t equal to negative 5. So we don't really want to have a negative 5 seconds, right? We can't. So actually, that will be a solution that's extraneous to the situation. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of X that out because we can't have a negative five seconds. Let's see if I have a time machine. 
Okay, so for the second part, though, t could be at 15 seconds. That makes so much more sense. After we throw the ball, it would take 15 seconds for the ball to hit the ground.